So domain and range, we said right off the bat, you remember domain was the fancy word for x values, right? Domain is our x values, range is our y values, right? If I'm reading the domain from a graph, I'm always going to go left to right. Because my x values, remember, are these ones. They're the ones going across the graph. So when I'm reading my graph or finding my domain, I'm starting on the left and reading all the x values I have over to the right. If I'm talking about range, I'm going from the bottom to the top of the graph. Because remember, anytime I'm writing my intervals, I always want the smallest number first and then the biggest. So I'm starting with my lowest number and checking out what I have all the way up to my highest number for my range. So now if I'm looking at that first graph, I would put it in your notebook. And if you are feeling extra fancy, I have pretty stickers. You want some pretty stickers? No. Anybody feeling fancy want some pretty graph stickers? Oh, now we're all jumping on the graph bandwagon. We're going to have beautiful notes. You want pretty notes? You start, start drawing it and you're like, grids, please get me grids. Good thing I exercise and strong enough to rip this. You're welcome. Right, you can more than be right up here. So if you look at that first graph, let's draw that first square on there. Anytime I'm talking about my domain. Domain is my x value, so it's from left to right, we said. If I'm starting on the left, basically what I do in order to get an idea of where I'm starting is I start just coloring on the left of the graph, and I just kind of keep shading in everything until I get to the graph, because that tells me where I'm going to start. I don't have any graph in that purple area, so I don't need any of those numbers. So now that I've shaded in, I can see that my domain for this first one, my domain starts right here, right here, right, my graph starts touching or my purple lines start touching my graph right at my x value of negative 4. So the first thing, my first number for my domain is going to be negative 4. Since the line is solid, there, I'm including negative 4, so I'm going to use a bracket. See if you look at example number 2 has an open circle there. Anytime you're going to use a parenthesis, they'll physically have that open circle if they want you to use a parenthesis. So since there is nothing here, this is a solid line over here, we're just going to use a bracket. Then I want to know how far to the right I go, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to start on the right, and I'm going to shade until I hit the graph. I'm going to keep going, and I hit the graph when I get to 4, so that tells me my domain is going to stop at 4. And same thing, it's a solid line right there, so I'm going to use a bracket. So I start at my left, see where the left number is, start on the right, see where my right number is, and that gives me all of the values that I have in my graph. So instead of saying I have negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, all the way up to 4, I can just say I have all the numbers from negative 4 to 4. 
for my range, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way up. So range, if I'm starting at the bottom, I'm shading, I'm shading, I'm shading. And I finally get to where I hit my graph. And now my graph, I see, starts at negative 3. So when I write my range, my first number is going to be negative 3. It's a solid line. So I'm using a bracket. And now I need to know where my graph stops. So I want to see where my top is. I don't need anything above there. And I notice once I shade that I can see my top of my graph is clearly right here, which is at 5. So my last number is 5. Again, I still have a fully solid line. There's no open circles on that line. So I know that this is 5. And now I've been able to tell you my domain and my range, my graph. You know all the x values I have, you know all the y values I have, and you're a happy camper because you know these things. So now I'm going to do the same thing with the next one. If I want to know the domain of number here, the domain of number 2, I want to know where number 2 starts on the left. So I start on the left side of my graph, and I'm just going to color until I touch the graph. Now I notice I touch the graph right at negative 5. I notice that I touch the graph right at negative 5. So negative 5 is going to be my first number. Now, because I have this open circle right here, I'm not going to include negative 5 because even though my graph goes up to negative 5 and it's kind of going through there, that open circle tells me I don't actually have a point at negative 5. So that's when I'm going to use a parenthesis. Then i got to find the other side of my domain. So I want to look over here. And I notice that I don't have any graph until I get to 3. So my domain ends at 3. And same thing, I have an open circle there, so that also gets a parenthesis. Then I'm going to do my range. Start from the bottom until I get to the graph. And I get to the graph right when I hit negative 3. But now there's no open circle there. That line is just a connected line. So because there's no open circle, I use my bracket. And then I need my top number. So I shade from the top down. And I stop shading when I hit the graph. which is at 5, and again, no open circle, so I'm including 5. It's kind of a strange concept, and it's a little bit weird to get used to, but I think the actual like shading of the graph helps you see like what we're including and what we're not including. Because we're just saying domain is every x value that exists on the graph, range is every y value that exists on the graph. Are you ready to spice it up a notch? <laughs> yes. Yes, it's Thursday. It's last period. We want to learn. All right, so if I look at number three, 
and do my domain first. And my domain tells me I want to start from the left. So I think especially like with the square and with the circle, it was kind of easy to see that the numbers were all kind of in one little place because it was just a shape and it was easy to read. And when we start looking at actual graphs and things are kind of happening all over the place, it helps us to eliminate our answers by doing this shading. So start on the left. And I want to know where I'm going to touch my graph first. And all of a sudden, at negative 2, I hit my graph. So the first number in my domain is going to be negative 2. Do I want to use a bracket or a parenthesis? A parenthesis, because those big old open circles. Now, if you got to a situation where one circle was closed and one circle was open, the bracket always wins. So if it's colored in in at least one place, if the number exists anywhere on the graph, we go with the bracket. The parentheses is only if it doesn't exist at all. So in a situation where you have one open circle and one closed circle, you go with the closed circle. That's the winner. Because it just has to exist somewhere for us to include it. But in this situation, it doesn't exist anywhere, so we go parentheses. Then I want to know my right side. So I'm coloring, 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 all the way until I get to the graph, which is at 2. Parenthesis or bracket? Bracket, because there is no open circle. There's actually graph there, so I am including that too. So now I can see, even from what I've shaded, I can see I only have x values from negative 2 to 2, which is exactly what I wrote in my interval. Now my range, I'm going low to high, right, because I want my smallest number first, so I start at the bottom, and I start my coloring. And I'm coloring all the way until I get to negative 2. Am I including that negative 2, or am I not including that negative 2? Not including it. Good not including it because there's an open circle. Now if it was a flat line coming out of that open circle, then I would include it because I would have graph at other places at negative 2. But my line's going up from there, so I don't have any negative 2s. I'm not including it. Then I want to start at the top, come down, until I get to 2. two. Include or don't include? Don't include. Ah, oh, you guys are professional. Professional. What about this next one? If I want to find the domain of this next one, I see already, right off the bat, I see that my graph is going on forever, right? It's, good. it's going forever and ever to the left, so there's nothing I can shade on the left, because even though the graph isn't physically right here. I know that this arrow means graph goes forever and ever and ever in this direction and it'll keep going. There's nowhere I can color there that the graph wouldn't be. So because there's nowhere I can color, that tells me my domain starts at negative infinity. There's nothing on the left I can shade, so I've got to start at negative infinity. But I can shade on the right because there's no graph over here. There's no graph until I get to 2 and I'm going to include bracket. Yeah, bracket because I'm including it. It's a closed circle. Then I got my range. So I'm going to start low. Shade until I get to my graph. I, at negative 2, I get to my graph. Then I got to decide. Bracket or parenthesis? Bracket, right, because it's included. And then it goes up forever, right? My graph is pointing up, so it's going to keep going. So there's nowhere, again, that I can shade on the top. So I'm going to infinity. 
parentheses on my infinity because I always have parentheses on my infinity. All right, now I've got two arrows going in two different directions for number five. So if my graph is going, my fancy parabola, right, is going all the way to the left and it's opening all the way to the right, is there anywhere on the left or right that I can shade that won't touch that graph? No, right? There's nothing I can shade. I'm always going to touch the graph. The graph is going up to the left forever, so it'll always be over here somewhere. It's going up to the right forever, so it'll always be over here somewhere. There's nothing I can shade, so that means I can have all my numbers, or I can go from negative infinity to positive infinity. What about my range? Does it go up and down forever? No. no. It goes up forever, definitely, right? But it has, there's nothing down here, so I can get rid of this stuff. I don't need anything down here. I don't need any graph until I get to negative 2. Negative 2 to infinity. infinity. And I knew negative 2 was a bracket because there's no open circle there. There's just some smooth graph going on. So I'm including negative 2. You were ready for spicy. But are you ready for super duper spicy? Oh, I think you're ready. Whoa! Have you ever seen such a thing before? No. This is the day for surprises. They're right next to you, if you need more. My domain. Weirdest graph you've probably ever seen. Kind of looks like, almost like a frog jumping or something, the trail that the frog would make while he was jumping. But I notice right away when I look at this graph, okay, there's nothing I can shade to the left because the arrow is pointing to the left, right? It's going to keep going in this direction forever. So there's nothing I can do over there. I also notice that this weird bouncy little graph is going forever this way. There's nothing I can do over here. So because I don't shade anything in purple, I go negative infinity to infinity. I can have all my x values. It's going left and right forever. So all my x values exist. As for my range, I do notice that the graph is pointing up on this side. It's also pointing up on the left side. So it's going up forever, but I don't need this part. There's no graph down here until I get to zero. So I'm going to start at zero. I'm going to include it because I don't have any open circles. I just have smooth graph. And then I'm going up forever, so I'm going all the way to infinity. Not too bad, just a weird shaped graph, right? Weird shaped graph we can handle. Then we got three th little tiny lines for number seven. So if I'm starting with my domain, I do notice that there is no graph and there are no arrows that are telling me the graph's going to continue. So I notice there is no graph until I get to negative 4. So I'm going negative 4. That's an open circle at negative 4, so I'm using a parenthesis. And then I notice that this line stops right here, right? It stops at negative 1. But notice that when it stops at negative 1, it starts again at negative 1 on that second line. So I have two options. I could write three separate domains. I could write three intervals, one for each piece. Or I can look at it and I can say, okay, even though it's stopping, even though my first piece is stopping right here, I'm not skipping any numbers. I'm just kind of dropping down and starting again. And I didn't miss any of my x values because when I didn't have negative 1 here, I did have negative 1 here. And it kept going 
right? And when it stops here, it jumps right up and then keeps going. So technically, it's all one. All my x values, yeah. when I start at negative 4, show up until I get to 5. So my domain still is only negative 4 to 5. 5 is a closed circle, so it gets a bracket. You wouldn't be wrong if you had gone from negative 4 to negative 1, started again for the next line at negative 1, went to 3, and then started again at 3 and went to 5. It says the same thing. It's just way more work for you because if you notice, even though I'm not including negative 1 here, I am including it here, so I didn't skip anything. I'm not including 3 here, but I am including 3 here, so it exists. So I didn't need to actually say my domain is stopping and skipping anything because I'm not skipping any numbers between here. I'm going from negative 1 to negative 1. It didn't go anywhere. So you would not be wrong if you did each piece. This is just the easier, more simplified version. The range, on the other hand, when I look at the range, I don't have anything, no graph, no graph, no graph, no graph, until I get to negative 2. But then my y values, I also don't have any y values after that, right? There's nothing happening here. I could fill this in again. I don't have any more y values until I get to 1. And then at 3, right? I just have those three numbers as my y value. Shaded in pretty so you can see. So when I just have actual numbers, I don't actually have a group of numbers here. I just have a negative two, I just have a one, and I just have a three. When I'm just listing numbers like that, I use a fancy swiggly parenthesis like that that says that that's just a group of numbers. It's not everything from negative 2 to 3. It's just the numbers negative 2, 1, and 3. So sometimes you might just have one y value or you might just have one x value because you have a straight line going on. So if you just need to list a number, you use those nice swiggly things, swiggly brackets, and then bam, you're set to go. What do you think? Beautiful.